right the way through from knowledge all the way through to the evaluation statements. But yeah, good question and uh, good to practice that sort of skill. Okay, so next we're going to move on and have a little look at the explain command word. I, I always remember working with uh, Elizabeth Ring, who is the uh, former subject specialist for this at OCR. And she always used to say, when we were talking about the explain command word, that explain really means to just scratch, it's a scratch the surface explanation. And I've always sort of stuck by that and always shared that with my students. So for an explain question, they don't need to write reams and reams. It really is just a, a scratch the surface that we're looking for here. So explain questions, they're going to be focusing on AO1B or AO2 for two marks. So it's that understanding and application. Candidates are often asked to interpret data, and particularly in the macro paper, I think you'll find this a lot, not so much in the micro, but certainly in the, in the macro paper. So just with, the, with regard to that, really important to give your students maybe a weekly opportunity to practice that skill of just interpreting data. What I tend to do is to share maybe a, a newspaper article from the Sunday Times or something like that with my students. Um, again, these are all free, available on Dropbox. I can drop them in the chat at some point, but um, I usually use David Smith from the Sunday Times and just get your students to, to practice uh, responding to those particular questions. Give them, give them a, a little chance to practice responding to data and interpreting the data. And the other thing to say, it's really, really important that your candidates answer in context. So often, really good candidates lose out because they know all of the theory, they can apply all of the theory, but they just don't apply it in context. context and it's such a shame when that happens. So do encourage your students and do really enforce that point with them. You must, must, must reply in context. And again, as with the state questions, so this is a two mark question typically for explain, and you need to ensure that your students include two clear points. And what I tend to find works well is get them to put their first point and then maybe write, but, and if they don't even write it, just think to themselves in their heads, well, as a consequence, what's going to happen? And then to include their second point. So I think that's best illustrated just by looking at a few examples. So again, here we have some examples from the 2019 papers, explaining the role of consumers. So you might be thinking there, so consumers buy goods and services, for example, so that'd be one mark. And then you need to think, right, well, as a consequence, what happens? So consumers create demand in the economy, for example, might be a point you can make for the second mark. So really important, just first point, as a consequence, second point. And the only other thing I'd say with regard to the questions on that uh, slide that you can see in front of you would be with regard to question 23D2, so the final question about the product market. It, it's, it's really strange, actually, how this tends to throw students, not only on this uh, specification, but on the legacy specification. So the students seem really confused just by the term product market for some reason. So when you're going through markets, as I am with my year 10s at the minute, do make it clear what is actually meant by a product market, because for some reason, they do find that quite tricky, quite difficult. So let's have a look at some examples. So explain the role of consumers. Consumers buy the finished product. So again, I've already kind of elaborated on that particular question. That, that question was awarded one out of two. And the next one, one way in which a rise in interest rates could affect the music shop. So this is a good answer. So uh, you'll be able to see the as a consequence link here. Two out of two for this one. A rise in interest will increase average costs. So there's your one, if you will. And then the candidates being thinking to themselves, right, so as a consequence, what happens? So you could kind of easily plug in here and as a consequence, reduce profit made by the music shop, for example. So it's a, a good example of a kind of two, two parter, if you will. This next question, explain how markets determine the price of a product. So this particular candidate uh, scored one out of two for this. Um, they determine price with the demand as the product and the supply of the product. So we talked about demand and supply. 
but maybe they could have gone on to talk about maybe price acting as a rationing device or the fact that markets help to iron out surpluses and shortages, that type of thing. Now that's quite a complicated thing, I, 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 would, I would agree. If you're thinking that, that is quite a complicated thing to think about surpluses and shortages. But those are the sorts of things that we would be looking for in a question like that. This next question, explain what Sophia means by the demand for by her friends. So by her friends, so we need to be answering in context here. So this, hopefully you'll be familiar with this particular paper. It's all about a charity shop and Sophia buying dresses in a charity shop with her friends. Um, so this particular candidate has thankfully mentioned her friends. So it's, it kind of puts it in context, but this particular answer only scores uh, one out of two. So again, we'll be looking for something a bit more than what's here. And as a consequence, Something else needs to be uh, written, particularly with regard to the demand by her friends for dresses, as the, the case study referred to. Again, this is a, a one mark out of two question. Explain how low wage increases in the UK economy could damage Crote Limited. So again, context is important here. So people will not be, not be able to afford their goods um, so we're talking about the product market here. So the candidate has identified that we're talking about the product market with uh, the reference here to goods. But again, there's just not quite enough here. So and as a consequence, kind of statement needs to be developed from that one. And now we move to just have a little consideration of the macro style of explaining questions. So I did say that there's certainly much more reference and much more a requirement for your students to be able to interpret data. So referring to the extracts, you can see is very common. I've highlighted things which students tend to find pretty difficult uh, year on year, um, regardless of how many times it's mentioned on CPD sessions such as this or um, an examiner's reports, wherever it may be. Price level, so changes in the price level. So that notion of the fact that when in rates of inflation are dropping that does not necessarily mean that prices are dropping that's very commonly uh, misinterpreted that particular data and the whole notion of real and nominal again uh, prices wages standards of living all of that type of thing again seems to be a, a difficult thing for candidates to understand and maybe something that you could be looking to really hone in on when you're, when you're teaching these aspects so let's have a look at some of these sample answers for the macro questions. So explain with reference to extract one, how economic growth have influenced the change. So again, we're asked to reference the data. This is a good answer, this one. And they've got the cause and the effect the right way around here, which was something that we were looking for. Uh, on the particular mark scheme for, for this one in, in 2019. So the unemployment rate has fallen, which shows that there was an increase in economic growth as more workers were needed to supply the extra demand. So they've got the, the cause being the growth and then the effect being that we will hire extra workers and the unemployment dropping off. So that's a good answer that one. The next one I've included just because, <clears throat> whilst that previous one was a good answer, it was one of very few to this particular question. So maybe this whole notion of the trade-off aspect between key macroeconomic objectives and the links between macroeconomic objectives, maybe that's something that uh, if you have time, you could really hammer home, maybe come some sort of revision time at the end of the course. But yeah, th this was very common in the 2019 series that this particular question was simply left blank. The next question, much more straightforward. I think it's kind of more your straightforward state and explain. So structural employment. So give it the example and then just explain what it is. That's a really straightforward two marks out of two for that one. I'll not dwell on that. This particular question is the price level question to which I previously referred. And this particular candidate scored zero out of two because they're talking about levels and lowest points rather than rates and uh, rising at a slower rate. So again, this is very typical, a deliberate sort of 
attempt, I guess, to trip up your question, your uh, candidates to really find out if they know what they're talking about. So something to really bear in mind when you when you're teaching that uh, aspect of inflation. Uh, this particular question has been very well answered. So real values, the real value of savings would have fallen as the rate of inflation increased. And then they've given an example there. So again, that's a, a nice two out of two question there. So no problems at all with that one. Uh, this particular question, explain how the supply side of education and training may help to achieve price stability. Wow, what a tricky question. I'm sure you'll agree. Supply side policy, price stability, two pretty difficult terms. And it's difficult, I think, even for us as staff and as teachers to put that into words possibly. So if it's difficult for us, it's no wonder that candidates struggled with this particular, uh, this particular question. This particular candidate scored one out of two on this one. Um, but again, if you can get your students to think about and the as a consequence, so if people are more productive, then as a consequence, and then you we're looking for something along the lines of that firms will more easily be able to meet the increased demand or uh, that will then prevent the upside inflationary pressures or something along those lines. But yeah, a tricky little question that was very tricky indeed, certainly for a GCSE candidate. Explain how rising imports may affect employment. Again, nice, straightforward. Most candidates dealt with this pretty well. And again, the and as a consequence is some uh, a kind of linking statement that you can use really well here. So demand for domestic goods may fall and as a consequence. And then they then include part two of the answer. So that would again give you the two out of two there. So that's it, ladies and gents, on explain. Again, any questions, comments? Okay, let's crack on. So next.